Morning, or evening, gorgeous brethren and sisters. Let's have everybody back along with us here with our Word Awakening, an hour of midweek uh, prayer and preaching time. And uh, we uh, look forward to continuing in the 37th Psalm here today, as well as getting into uh, having a prayer time. And uh, we'll get to right into things here with uh, with our prayer request, as we've been saying. My mother-in-law, Jenny Tyler, will be going for a pre-op on Tuesday at the present time of recording this. That'll be Tuesday, June the 7th. And so, uh, uh, for a back surgery that she's going to be having, that back surgery will be scheduled probably like toward the end of uh, June, probably like around the, I would imagine, the 20th, you know, like to the 30th of June, maybe the 1st of July, I'm not sure when they have time, but, you know, probably like the 20th of June and on after that. And so, uh, be praying that uh, the pre-op go well and that back surgery would be scheduled as soon as possible. I also have a very special request that the uh, Lord knows about, so uh, please uh, help me pray, if you would, as about that uh, special request that uh, God would just uh, move in uh, that way that only He can. And uh, so may uh, uh, Christ just have all the preeminence in our lives, amen, and may our hearts be revived, and may we get that which we need to do the Lord's work and to, uh, to do the Lord's will. And uh, may Christ just continually guide and direct all of us in the way that he would have us to go in our hearts and in our lives and that we would be used mightily of the uh, Lord God. Amen. And so we're starting praying for everybody out there. I know there are many needs, many financial, emotional, spiritual needs. Pray that God would meet all of those for the lost to be saved and that a backslid people would be reclaimed and that, once again, that we would all be revived what this ministry is all about. And I thank the Lord for what he's done in my heart and life and for reviving us. And so... uh Let's go ahead now and have a word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. Thank you, Father, that you've done all the blessings that you've bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives, Lord. Just thank you so much for this ministry and the blessing that it is. And thank you so much, Lord, for our salvation and allowing us to meet again over the cyber waves. Just pray that you keep us and just use us for your honor and for your glory. And just pray that you work on hearts and souls and give us all that which we need, Lord, to be revived and do your will. Uh, praying for those that are lost. We all have lost loved ones. Pray that you'd save them. Give them opportunity to be saved, Lord. Convict them. That for those discouraged that you'd encourage them, those backs that they be reclaimed, those walking afar off. And we pray, Lord God, for families, that they would be strengthened, for parents, for children, and that we would all just be what we ought to be, Father. And I pray for uh, uh, for all those, Lord, that are on the bit of affliction, that you touch them and be with them, those that are have cancer and diseases, those recovering from certain procedures. And like my mother-in-law, who's going for this uh, pre-op Tuesday, pray that uh, that back surgery will be scheduled soon and that it would be successful and uh, that you'd be with all those that are a sick in body, for all those that have financial needs, emotional needs, and other spiritual needs, that uh, those holding grudges and so forth, that you'd encourage them, Lord God. Just encourage your people. I know that we get discouraged. You know, that's what the devil can use. Uh, you know, like we read about, you know, great people that you use, you know, like in the Bible and, and uh, reading about men like Charles Spurgeon and John Wesley, you know, they were tremendously used of you, but they battled discouragement because that's the one thing that the devil's going to try and hold on to. But I pray that you would just encourage us, Lord God, just send us the help that we need. You know what help we need better than we do. And I just plead the blood of Christ that you'd get it, that you'd be with the special request that I have, that you'd intervene and work in that situation. And just pray that you would just do that work, Father, that only you can. In our hearts and our lives, bless churches, bless pastors, assistant pastors, uh, secretaries, treasurers, Sunday school teachers, deacons, ushers, each one that takes part. Pray that you strengthen churches, strengthen your men, uh, you know, also the missionaries that are on the field, those on deputation such as us, those getting ready to move, that you would just provide our needs and be with us. And just pray that you would uh, be with the evangelists, the preacher boys, those in Bible college, you know, like teenage preacher boys, like I was, that you just encourage them and use them. You know, like uh, like I know, you know, that as well. You know, the devil's going to be after a young man, you know, that's on fire for you. And I pray that you just help these young preachers and just give them that which they need to stay the course. And also be with young ladies as well, Lord. You know, those that have been called, you know, as well to full-time ministry. Those that desire to marry preachers, that you just touch them and be with them. Bless all the ministries associated with this one, like with the word Bible and Student Temperance Awakening. Just bless us, Lord, and keep us and uh, use us for your honor and glory. May we be rebuild your work and may you just add to our ministries as you see fit. And just give us all that which we need, Father. Do your work and will. And we're so to be careful to give you on all the praise and all the glory for all the courage that you alone. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. And, um... Uh, by way of announcements, got everything going on as uh, scheduled here this week. We'll be having, uh, I'll actually be teaching 
uh, The Temperance Awakening, the next lecture, which I encourage you to watch, even if you've not been watching those. We're going to be looking at recovering from alcoholism, and we'll be looking at a lot of things in the Bible, you know, like, uh, like what the Bible has to say about getting the victory and so forth. That would be a little longer, uh, possibly, than most of the lectures that we have. Like I said, that's going to be a little bit kind of like a preaching time there, so I encourage you to go over to that YouTube channel of Temperance Awakening. I'm particularly watching that one about recovering from alcoholism. I think that'll be the 20th alcohol lecture, if my memory serves me right. That'll be, that'll be titled as Alcohol Lecture Number 20, and so I uh, encourage you to watch that, even if you haven't been watching the other ones. I know that's not everybody's forte. A lot of things we talk about there, you don't have to do with health and, you know, things of that nature, which I know that's just not everybody's interest. I would encourage you to watch the next one though, that we're going to be doing as well. We'll be in our sign language class with the Revival Institute later. And then we'll be having our revival preaching in the book of Haggai as well as our uh, Sunday sermon, which is in voice and sign language. And we do appreciate uh, everybody who's uh, gone and made the uh, schedule changes with us that have still viewed like all our preaching and all, like the way we were doing our psalms on Sunday. And then we changed it to... Uh, here in midweek, we appreciate your patience and understanding and all the support and the prayers that go for us. We don't all take that lightly. I appreciate those of you that uh, that support this ministry, like with your prayers and encouragement. And it's really praying for everybody out there as well. And also as well, of course, as I said, next week we'll be traveling. Uh, we'll be going to see my parents in South Carolina and uh, so forth. We'll be over there having a, having a, having a time of leisure. We'll be having a break. We won't be preaching or teaching any. Uh, that week, that's the week of the 12th, we will be here the next week, I should say, like the week of the, the 5th, you know, which is Sunday. We'll be doing everything that week, this coming week. Uh, but the week after that, you know, the week of the 12th, you know, that Sunday, we won't have any preaching or teaching with the Word Awakening or Temperance Awakening or Revival Institute. And so we'll be having a week off there. Like I said, I guess we could call that our summer break. Essentially, just a week long, but we'll be back the week after that. But, uh... So uh, keep those things in mind as well and be praying for us as we'll be on the road traveling. I should have mentioned that in our prayer time, uh, just to pray to God be with us. Amen. And so now we come to the 37th Psalm. We're going to be looking at uh, verses 27 to 30 here for a, for a few moments. Verses 27 to 30. And the Bible says, Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints, they are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off, the righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. And so we'll pray that the Lord would add his blessing to the reading of his word, and help us as we continue the message here, a contrast between the godly and the wicked, Psalm 37. And our Father, we do love you, and thank you for the time of prayer that we've already had. Uh, the time of fellowship with your good people. And I just pray that you'd add your blessing to the reading of your word now. Just house behind the cross. Give us an unction from on high. And just may your word go forth. And may it help our hearts, Lord. May we be a better Christian than we began. And just help us, Lord, in all things to do your work and will. Just bless our churches. Bless our ministries. And just keep us, Lord, for your honor and glory. And save that one that might be lost. Till the sick and curse, discourage. Work on hearts and souls is our prayer. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. So continuing our message here, a contrast between the godly and the wicked, our first point was an exhibition of evildoers. Our second point, an exhibition of the trusting. Our third point, an exhibition of the meek and evil. Our fourth point, the evil will reap what they sow. Our fifth point, the righteous are saved. Our sixth point, the Lord knows the upright. Our seventh point, the wicked will perish. Our eighth point, a contrast between the wicked and the righteous. And then last week, we did our ninth point, the delight in the way of the righteous. And now, this uh, uh, afternoon, we'll be looking at our tenth point, an exhortation to do good. An exhortation to do good. It says, depart from evil and do good. Because those are two things that cannot mix. I know it's probably elementary to most, especially in... And uh, with this ministry, those of you that listen to us regularly, but in order to do good, to be godly, you have to depart from evil. There are only two ways to be. You cannot be in light and be in darkness. And that's what a lot of people today try to do. You know, that's really the problem. 
you know, with the newly angelical philosophy and, you know, the philosophy of liberal Christians, you know, they try, they try to mix the two, but that's something that you can't. You cannot be righteous and wicked. You cannot be good and evil. You have to separate the two, and if you really have a heart for God, you're going to be righteous. That's what the Bible says. You're not only going to be righteous, <coughs> but you're going to hate that which is evil. You're going to want to have no part of that which is ungodly. You're going to get as far away from it as you possibly can. You must depart from evil and then do good and live for the Lord. Of course, we get that victory, you know, by praying, by studying the Bible, you know, like we mentioned. That's what we're going to be looking at with that Temperance Awakening lecture about, uh, you know, like about recovering from alcoholism. If you want to get alcohol out of your life or, you know, any type of ungodliness, you know, pornography, you know, whatever that might be. If, if you, if it's, if it's to get something out of your life, or if it's to get something good in your life, if you want a better marriage, if you want to say, I'm going to start putting God first in my marriage, I'm going to start putting God first in the way I raise my children. You know, you got to get in the Bible, you got to get into prayer, you can't make it without God's Word. You know, this is the standard right here. Oh, like I was meditating on that, uh, the, uh, uh, this the greatest gift that that an individual has ever given. Of course, the greatest gift that you've ever gotten at all would, you know, coming from God would be salvation, but really from a human, well, I guess even from a human, you know, we could say that would be the gospel, you know, would be the greatest thing ever. But uh, as far as material gifts go, I should just put it that way, as far as a material gift goes, the greatest gift that I have ever gotten is a Bible, particularly this Bible right here, like we mentioned that before. This, as you tell here, I've used this so much, it's wore out. Uh, this is the Companion Bible by, uh, by E.W. Bullinger, uh, who did the notes. Of course, King James Version, he did the notes here. Uh, my wife got me this four years ago in 2018. And uh, like I said, I've actually did a study about that before, a couple of them, but I know particularly one like right after we started this ministry a couple years ago, uh, like in 2020, uh, like I actually looked at a lot of my books and showed the study Bible that I use, which is this one right here, and I love the notes and everything. It's just, it's just wonderful. Uh, like E.W. Bullinger, you know, by my opinion, one of the greatest theologians to ever live. Uh, but, you know, the Bible, because, you know, that's where it's at. You know, if we want to do good, you know, we have to be Bible-based. We have to have biblical standards. <clears throat> See, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. You know, that there, I believe, like after, you know, reading, uh, like after most theologians and so forth, you know, that word meaning there, dwell, that means you're going to dwell in the house of God. You're going to dwell, you know, in the will of God. You know, whenever you start doing good, you know, you're going to dwell, you know, in God's house, in God's will, you know, doing what God wants you to do. And the verse 28, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. You know, the Lord loves, you know, righteous judgment. Now, like here, I believe in this context, first of all, he loves, he loves the judgment of being able to judge his children, to judge them with blessings, you know, to judge them with blessings. You know, you reap what you sow. You know, God loves, you know, rewarding, you know, doing, you know, righteous judgment, you know, rewarding, you know, his people for the right things, you know, that they have done. You know, and I think also that's referring to the time that God does punish the wicked, particularly, you know, whenever God punishes the wicked, you know, tearing them away, you know, from the righteous, because, of course, David, you know, he was oppressed, you know, by many wicked people, you know, just like we are. You know, like we mentioned, you know, discouragement, you know, and so forth. You know, like there were mobs, you know, that tried to take out like John Wesley, Charles Wesley, George Whitfield, and so forth. You know, there have always been wicked people that have tried to take out godly people. You know, like we see that like all through the life of the Apostle Paul. You know, you know, and among many others. But, you know, the Lord likes it, you know, whenever, you know, he's able to preserve his saints. Like it says there... The latter part of verse 28 about the saints, you know, they are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off, you know, whenever, you know, whenever God's people, you know, get the victory. You know, whenever they get to be blessed, you know, God loves that. So like verse 29, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. I think that's kind of going off of the latter part of verse 27. You know, God's people, you know, they dwell forever, you know, with God. You know, they live in the victory. 
you know, yes, you know, we have trials and tribulations, but that shouldn't keep us from being in God's will. Because it can, you know, it hurts being in God's will, you know, just for starters. You know, you have to make sacrifices, you know, that's what God wants to see. You know, I certainly don't think that particularly, like a preacher of any kind, can have a successful ministry without making a sacrifice, you know, without sacrificing some things. You know, making some material sacrifices, you know, some financial sacrifices. You know, certainly some time, like we mention that often, you know, some time sacrifice. You know, you ain't going to get anywhere with God, even if you haven't been called to preach under a full-time ministry. You know, if you're not willing to sacrifice you some of your time for God, you know, you're not going to get anywhere for the Lord. But certainly, you know, like as a missionary, you know, you have to, you know, you have to make those sacrifices. But, you know, that's all worth it. You know, whenever, after, whenever we make those sacrifices, you know, whenever we resist that temptation, you know, we bring forth fruit, you know, like it says in John 15. You know, we do dwell forever, you know, in the will of God. You know, of course, talking about eternity, you know, up in eternity, we're going to be rewarded forever. Then verse number 30, The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. <clears throat> See here, you know, doing good, you know, we speak wise things. You know, we speak of God's judgments. You know, we speak of godly things. You know, we speak the truth, and that's what God needs today. People, you know, that are going to, you know, speak His truth at any and all cost. And thank you so much there for, uh, for being with us here today. Good stuff there from the Word of God. And uh, we'll continue there in Psalm 37 next week as well. Of course, right back here uh, later, uh, later on this week for our, uh, for our revival preaching in the book of Haggai, then with our Sunday sermon. And like we said, with Temperance Awakening, I encourage you to go over there and, uh, watch our, um, uh, uh, look at alcohol lecture number 20. I do believe that is, I'm pretty sure it's going to be number 20. Uh, I so encourage you, like I said, even if you don't usually watch those, you know, go watch that one. It'll be a great help and a blessing to you, you know, talking about getting the victory and so forth. And so thank you so much for uh, being with us here now uh, with uh, Word Awakening and uh, our uh, uh, midweek preaching and prayer. So we had a good time in prayer and in God's Word. And so continue to pray for us here as we're praying for everybody out there. And uh, for now, we'll uh, close in prayer. Uh, Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. Thank you for that you've done all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon our hearts and lives. Thank you so much, Lord, for your word and allowing us to be in it. Just pray that your word would go forth and that you'd bless it and that it would help our hearts, Lord, that you'd be with the needs that we've mentioned for uh, my mother-in-law, the special requests that we have and all the other needs out there, that you touch them and help them. Just bless our dear listeners in a mighty way, Lord God. Just provide for us. Give us all that which we need, Lord, to do your work and will as we know your will, Lord God. May we be faithful and just walk in your will and in your way and just uh, may Christ get all the honor and glory for everything that we do in our lives. For certainly in that precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Anyway, thank you so much, folks, for being with us, and we'll see you next time. And until the day break in the shadows, flee away. I am Dr. Coop, and I love you, and I appreciate you.